This gentleman from uh, Arizona, Mr. Biggs, recognized for five minutes. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, do get a, I do get a kick out of the fact that you guys are being starved. This body just passed out a CR that kept you at the levels, same levels that Biden, Schumer, and Pelosi did just, uh, just not even a year ago. Will the gentleman yield That's for pretty starved. No, I won't. Okay. I was going to help you out with y'all's budget. So here's the deal. I want to admit into the record this right here, the preliminary results show federal buildings remain underutilized due to longstanding challenges and increased telework. That's a GAO study and from a testimony given in the Congress Without objecting, being under just the record. a few months ago. Are you all familiar with the report? If you are, please raise your hand. You know, you're not familiar with this report. It's astounding. I hope that maybe um, we get better answers uh, going forward, but I mean, I was disappointed in your answers or failure to answer Mr. Palmer's questions. But here we go. This report outlines GAO's finding in their review of federal headquarters buildings earlier this year, and the results were actually startling. Commerce was one of the better performing agencies. It was in the top quartile of buildings surveyed. No agency of the federal government was utilizing more than 50% of their headquarters office space. The top quartile, average utilization rate was 35%. USAID and HHS fell into the second quartile, each with about a 23% utilization rate. SSA was in the bottom quartile of the agency surveyed along with HUD, GSA, OPM, USD, and SBA. Each of those agencies averaged 9% building utilization. That's 9%, 9%. Federal agencies spend $2 billion annually of taxpayer money to operate and maintain federal buildings and spend $5 billion more on leases. And this in our nation's capital, the offices are sitting empty. Additionally, each of you are here. Well, before I get there, let me just ask you, do each of you know what your current building utilization rate is? Mr. McNally, do you? Thank you for the question. I do not know the exact utilization rate. Ms. Stevens? We'll get back to you on that. Ms. Wow. Mr. Levitt? Uh, we have approximately 4,000 facilities across the country. I do not know the aggregate overall utilization rate. So the answer would be no. Mr. Pelter? Thank you, Congressman. Uh, for our headquarters building, the Herbert C. Hoover building, our most recent full quarter was at a 42 percent daily average. I'd have to take okay. back to the team for any additional information. Okay. That would, be, that would be different than the GAO report indicated. So I'd be interested in knowing. Um, and what plans do your agencies have to reduce your physical footprint since there seems to be so much vacancy, certainly in the headquarters level? Uh, Mr. Pelter. Thank you, Congressman. We've been actively working to reduce the footprint of our federal facilities over the long haul. And very recently, our USPTO campus in Alexandria was reduced by approximately 760,000 square How feet. How recently? And our census building out at the Suitland Federal Center is reducing by 300,000 square feet. And how recently was that? That's, almost a, that's over a million square feet. The Census Bureau is more recent, as we're anticipating the Bureau of Labor Statistics to join that facility. Uh, the USPTO program has going, been going, ongoing over the uh, last few years. How much, how much money did you save on that, on those programs? On, on I would have to take that question back to the team to get you a dollar figure response. Okay. So let's just, let's just go to uh, something maybe a little easier to answer. Mr. Last April, SSA announced the return of in-person services. But my constituents, like somebody else was testifying about, uh, Mr. Higgins, I believe, my constituents continue to face challenges reaching service representatives over the phone just to schedule meetings. I have a, a very large senior population. While SSA pushes people to access services online, we routinely, my office, routinely hears that constituency, constituents need access to forms that can only be accessed by going to a local SSA office. What steps are, is Social Security taking to ensure that seniors are able to access the services they need in person? Thank you for the question. So first, it is a priority for the Social Security Administration to have our field offices manned in a way that can serve your constituents. We also take tremendous you know, pride in our ability to provide them with the information that they need specific to the forms. Uh, again, I can look into that for you uh, for the record. but. We are constantly looking for ways to improve the dissemination of that information to your constituents, whether that happens to be in the field office or you know, publicly available from a digital perspective as well. I, I particularly think of the Apache Junction office, which has some really good people in it, 
but it's also hard to get in to see them sometimes. And so that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what the seniors face. That's why they're calling my office, because they need to get in. They need to see somebody to resolve these. And um, with that, Mr. Chairman, yield back. Gentleman yields back his time. Thank you very much. Uh, the uh, gentlewoman from Pennsylvania, Ms. Lee, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr.